Welcome back to another Act Analysis and Tips for Animators. And today I want to talk about episode five of Mayor of Easttown. And I want to talk about character motivation, character placement and staging for the characters, tweak on lip syncs and a bunch of other stuff. So let's go. There will be two more episodes to cover, episode six and seven as two separate parts. And before I cover episode five, hi, my name is JD from this channel. I do act analysis tips like these. I do animation analysis tips. I do animation feedback. I do lectures. I do rib reviews, product reviews, a bunch of stuff. This is the moment where I pitch my channel. If you like it, subscribe. If you don't like it, hang on. And maybe you'll like it later on and subscribe later on, whatever you want to do. But that is the pitch. It's YouTube, you know the drill. And let's get to the sequence. First up, we have this here. We have these characters talking and we have this character intro, which I love. I love <laughs> it's so good. That kid is so cute. I absolutely love it. Now, the reason I was showing this is because this is actually a good frame here. Because usually when you look at rigs that are free online, it's more in the younger or, you know, like 20 ish, 30 years old, but you don't really have that many old rigs and that many kits. And I'm going to be, you know, selfishly plugging here my creature lectures, you should have creatures on your reel as well. So think in terms of how many different types of characters in terms of age and size and scale could you show off in your reel? Because that could be really interesting. And also because of behavior, because old people will behave differently than younger people. Not that this guy is super young, but when you go forward here, you can see here you have an interesting scale difference. So you can even have an older person, but you don't show the whole thing. You have to worry about feet or worry about the face, but you have that interaction with the kid that could be really cute. Also, because you have a kid, you can have something like this. This would be interesting with an adult as well, but it's a bit more appropriate for a kid because they do a bunch of weird stuff at that age. So using a rig that's, you know, on the younger side, it gives you a lot more freedom to do silly stuff like this. And then you got the big contrast in terms of, again, behavior, movement, speed, like the agility and bending over. That kid can do this, but she probably can't. So this to me is a reminder of what you could use on your rig in terms of just more possibilities to show off your skills. And even this here from a mechanical point of view, this could be your sitting to standing assignment, right? So this character sitting and then gets up and you can see how oh, it's much more over the feet for balance. Oh, it takes a lot longer. Now she's also staying slightly hunched over because he's there and she wants to you know, hold his hand. But as an older person, you're going to get up differently than a 20 year old. Now, what I like about this is the combination of this. So you can say, I'm going to do a sit up assignment, but I want to make it more interesting. Well, maybe the motivation for her to get up is this is a kid that does something really funny, really weird, really fun to animate. And that is now the driver for her. Oh, I need to get up and take care of this kid. So now it has become something about this character interacting with this other character, maybe, you know, something like this, or at least a motivation for her to get up versus just a simple exercise where someone is sitting and then standing. So it kind of expands your shot and makes it more interesting, adds more layers, more things for you to show off on your reel. This is a longer sequence I can scrub through. You can see the evolution of what is going on. And I'm showing this because of character placement and things you can do in terms of eye line and reactions and the whole progression of how people relate up to a point where she is even leaving. So this would be in the first staging, you have someone is standing, someone is sitting, right? So you can potentially in your shot, maybe they're not on the same level or they are, or she wants to be in this case. And this is why she goes down lower on his level, maybe even lower so that it's kind of a plea for something, right? For sympathy or whatever it is. And I'm not going to spell too much in this scene. But this is something for you to think about when you have two characters. What is the staging? Do you want to start like this? Do you want to be always like this? Will your character maybe get this close, but then there's some sort of reaction, then she goes back to that? Or will she or he, whoever you're going to use, get closer, like in this case? Then after that, after a certain reaction, she will go, mm, okay, maybe he has changed. And then she goes back up, which you can see here after his reaction. You can see how she decides, okay, that's enough for me. And it's not even just getting up. It's even putting her hands into her pockets. It's really closing herself off. I'm going to go away. You can even go further and turn your character away and have their back turned towards that character. But think about that in terms of your relationships, right? If you have multiple characters, let's say two or more, are they always like this? Will there be a change where he gets up and she sits down? Will she get down and so on? So you have many possibilities to stage this in terms of camera and just placement between the two characters. And something else I want to talk about is that as she decides to be a bit more empathetic, she wants to help him. You can see there's the eye contact, they're looking. And something else about multiple characters is eye line. 
So they have contact every now and then they look to each other and they have a conversation. You can see they're looking. But the thing is, at one point, the character is going to disengage. And this is depending on you know, your lip sync and whatever you have in your scene there. But at this point, she says something that is not quite sitting well with him. You can see how suddenly he breaks eye contact and starts just to look away. And she notices that. She has that little bit of a tilt. And because of that, she starts to sit down and wants to say more and more and more. She wants to reconnect. And you can see he just doesn't want to do this. And he continues even with this here when he realizes she's close, she's touching him. You got that look here of, what are you doing? What is this? And then looks down. And just that disconnect with the eye line is really something that you can play with as well. So again, if you have multiple characters and this is your staging, will they look? When will they break contact? Who will and why? This can be in combination because of a dialogue piece. This, this could be something, just a reaction. This could be a pantomime thing. But overall, I think this is a really cool sequence for you to use you know, as, not as reference, but as a springboard, right? The placement of characters, when do they look? And will that intensify? At one point when he tells her, well, you know, maybe you should get away from here. Is that the moment where he will reinitiate eye contact? And you can see this here, bam, really locking in and telling her to get out to a point where it scares her and then she gets out. So anyway, think about that in terms of staging, eye contact, composition, and all that good stuff. This example is about a tweak for lip sync. So you have this character confessing to this character about what they did and not going to say too much because of spoilers, but there's a question that he's asking and it, it prompts a specific, you know, a bit of an anger reaction and a bit of a question from this guy to him. Again, I don't want to say too much. Basically, the gist is that he is going to ask him if he did something very specific. And you can see how, again, talking about eyeline again, where he really locks in. Before that, he was talking around, he was kind of, you know, scrambly and he was upset. But now he locks in and goes, what do you think I did this? Again, I don't want to say what, what the line actually is. But in this case, instead of asking again, yes, did you do this? He just has this. And I love that. I love how subtle this is. It's almost like he feels bad about asking. It's kind of maybe potentially embarrassing. It's like, like he feels bad. It's like, ah, do I really have to ask? I mean, I'm sorry, but you know, did you really do this? And then he gives him the answer and blah, 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 blah. But the reason why I'm showing this is what if in your dialogue you have whatever line and then this character says another line and then this character would say the line again or ask again and then this character would answer. What if it's possible in your audio to actually delete this? So now you're left with, hey, did you do this? What do you mean? Pantomime. Oh, I did blah, 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 blah. This could be an interesting tweak where instead of verbalizing it and you have this last piece of dialogue, you actually now take control of the shot, eliminate the dialogue moment there and just do this, just do a moment of a pleading where it's just, it's all in the eyes and in the face and head tilts, all that awesome subtle stuff. This is not always possible. Again, if you have dialogue and then you have ambient noise, you have busy street stuff, anything, and you cut out a piece, you're gonna really hear that beep, that silence, and then it kicks back in. So you would have to find a way to, if this is your dialogue piece, to cut a section out, but then add an overall noise, you know, ambient sound, room tone where you can't really tell that you cut a piece out. So it might be a bit trickier on your end, but I just wanted to mention that because it could be a really cool moment where instead of being you know, stuck with the dialogue and the delivery, now it's totally up to you to do something like this. And you can add you know, a second, two, you can make it longer. You can really determine what is the facial expression going to be. It could be also full body, whatever you want to do. But I like the idea of taking charge and tweaking an audio piece with something where it's all up to you. This is your creativity. You can you know, keep it non-verbal, you can change the subtext, you can do a bunch of stuff, and I think that would be kind of interesting to do. This one is about a character reaction. So again, I don't want to say too much, but they have an interaction, they're really cute, he likes her, and then he does this, and it's this moment after that, and she goes, what was this for? And he gives her a certain answer, and then it's the reaction after that. Hey, this is really cute, little smile there, and then that. I love how she has that tilt, and she watches him, she studies him, and he goes, Huh. Yeah, why not? <laughs> and I like this. And the reason why I like this is because this is again for you actually piggybacking on the previous shot. What if this is your shot? It's two characters, lip sync and lip sync. And technically this would be the end and scene, right? This is your two shot and that's where you're ending your animation. 
But what if you add that extra button? And again, you would have to have something where this is your lip sync sound, and if you just end, it's just kind of odd when it just cuts off and there's just silence. So you would have to find a way to extend, like I said before, some ambient noise. This could be some, I don't know, some birds in the back and some water, something so it doesn't feel like you're just cutting it off. But I like the idea of once the audio is done, you continue. And I've said that many times. And if you go through my acting analysis clips, I'm sure you have a bunch of examples of that. But I really like this was again, you're, you can do something where you almost expand the relationship. You can do your own pantomime. You can have your own little moment of, huh, it would be really cute, a cute reaction like this. You can do something where it's a complete change, where once he turns, she goes into, and, you know, I don't know what you would do after that kiss or whatever reaction, you can completely change everything where the original, you know, the source is they like each other, but you're changing it and you're making it different and original where she doesn't, you know what I mean? It's just a thing of, you might have lip sync as your source. You might have reference that you found, whatever it is. But ultimately the goal with your shot is to be as original and as creative as possible. You don't wanna just parrot something that's in the audio. You wanna show that when you do something for your demo reel and you send something to a company, wherever you wanna work, that you have your own ideas, your own creativity, and you can bring that to the table so that people can hire you based on your new ideas. They want something where you as an employee, or again, whatever relationship you have at that job, but you bring something new to the table, you can offer them something you instead of just copying something. And this is why I always bring up those, those examples with either like a button at the end or tweaking your, your lip sync or you maybe take a piece out. It's just what can you do to show off your own ideas, your own sense of timing, your own creativity, while still checking off all those boxes that you kind of have on a reel. I gotta show weight, I gotta show full body mechanics, I gotta show pantomime, I gotta show lip sync. Like you have and wait, like you have all those different things that you should technically show off so that people can look at your reel and go, yeah, this person can animate. But the thing is, every time someone sees a shot like this, like everybody should be at that level where you can say, where you look at this, you go, that person can animate, like, you know, in terms of mechanics and weight and polish. And then after that, I think the next level is what will get you hired, or at least get the foot into an interview door. But what is your original thought behind that? What is the, the creative choice of the performances or the mechanics or some style? Something where it's really, oh, that was a cool idea by this person specifically. And this, again, this is why I'm doing this whole series that hopefully all those examples serve as a springboard for you to go, oh, that was a neat idea. Now let me take this idea, rework it, make it my own, and then do this with it. And then people watch us and go, that's cool, you're hired. I'm obviously, you know, exaggerating, but I know it's probably not that fast, or maybe it is, you never know. But that is the plan with those examples. And speaking of examples, if you feel like those examples are helpful and you want me to help you with your shots, you know, we know what the drill is at the end, I pitch my workshops. You can sign up at any time. You can start whenever you can, it's very flexible. Check it out in the description, all information, go through the FAQ, and if you like it, sign up or contact me. We can talk about it, and that is that. And if you're still watching, as always, thank you for watching. Thank you for your time, I appreciate it. And if this is something where you don't wanna miss my next upload, because you thought, you know what, this was kind of cool. Feel free to subscribe, the pitch at the end. Again, hit that bell button so you don't miss any of those uploads. And that is that for my pitch. I thank you for watching till the end and I'll see you in my next upload.